students today we will discuss about the periodic classification of elements this is the fifth chapter of class 10 so <coughs> periodic classification of elements means the classification of various elements that we have in our nature so for this uh, first we have to understand what is element so an element is a pure so you see here an element is a pure substance that is made from a single type of atom so mark here it is made up elements are made up of single type of atom so there are almost 120 elements present in nature so in our nature there are almost 120 uh, types of elements are there so each element is made up of one type of uh, atom so if a carbon atom uh, element a carbon an element is there carbon so carbon will be made up of only carbon atom so if uh, in carbon atom we will not get oxygen atom or nitrogen atom so carbon element will be made up of only carbon atom and nitrogen similarly here we can see oxygen oxygen is made up of only oxygen atom nitrogen is made up of nitrogen atom so all these 120 elements are made up of single type of atom so this is this was the definition of element so before moving I, I would like to ask one question why are elements classified what is the necessity of classification so here we are classification of elements means we are classifying the element so elements are classified so what is the necessity of this classification why the elements need to be classified so for this one we have to understand that the answer of this classif classification of element is very simple to understand the fundamental properties of similar elements to understand the relationship between elements to understand the fundamental properties of elements elements we have 120 elements here so we have to understand the fundamental properties of those elements as well as the relationship between uh, these elements so if the elements are not classified we have to uh, study all the 120 elements individually so if we classify the elements it would be very easy for us to study them and to know the fundamental properties as well as the relationship between them so this classification made these things very easy so that we can study the elements if the elements are of same kind same type of elements similar properties the elements with similar properties can be studied in one group and, and the other elements which have similar properties can be studied in another group so if we study one group we can easily study uh, the whole group easily so we, uh, now we can move to understand the classification of elements first we have to know the atomic mass this term you probably studied all this in class uh, 9 so the number of protons and the number of neutrons determine an elements atomic mass atomic mass is very simple atomic mass means in an atom you see here if this is a carbon atom inside that we have protons and neutrons the total number of protons and neutrons how many numbers of protons and neutrons are there in this carbon atom we have six proton and six neutron so this six plus six is twelve so this is the twelve is here the atomic mass of carbon so in an atom of carbon we have six proton and six neutrons and all together these protons and neutrons are called as atomic mass so the number of See here the number of protons and the number of neutrons determine an atom an elements atomic mass means atomic mass is equal to proton plus neutron so in case of this carbon the proton the number of proton and the number of neutron is equal six and six but in all in all cases it may not be same if the number of proton if it is seven the neutron may not be seven it may be eight or nine it may be anything so now we'll move to atomic number what is atomic number so we have already learned atomic mass now what is atomic number atomic number here if you see the number of protons determine what atom we are looking at at for example all atoms with six protons are called carbon atoms so it's very simple here we can see this again carbon atom in carbon atom how many protons are there as you have seen already in carbon atom we have six protons so the number of protons so the number of the number of protons in an atom is called the atomic number the atomic number means how many atom uh, protons are there in an atom in the nucleus we find protons 
n uh, neutrons so how many protons are there in an atom this determine the atomic number if seven number of protons are there its atomic number is seven if eight is there its atomic number is eight so it is so it depends on the number of protons and atomic mass proton plus neutron and atomic number only proton so in the classification the first class uh, first one is de voronoi's classification one second so in the classification of elements the first classification is de voronoi's classification in 1817 in the year 1817 a german scientist and name johann wolfgang de voronoi remember the name johann wolfgang de voronoi tried to classify the elements of his time during his time how many elements were there so he tried to classify those elements he successfully classified elements having similar chemical properties into groups of 3 so he successfully classified the elements which uh, elements were there during his time so he successfully classified those elements which on uh, have similar chemical properties means the chemical properties of those elements which have similar properties he classified them into 3 3 groups groups of 3 these groups were called as triads he named these groups as triads because only 3 3 were there so he named them as triads tri means 3 so this is known as the voronoi's law of triads so what is law the voronoi's law of triads now we'll see the law states that when elements are arranged in the order of increasing atomic mass in a triad the atomic mass of the middle element was found are roughly equal to the average of the first and third element so what is the law we will check in the law states that when elements when the elements are arranged in the order of increasing atomic mass in the order of increasing atomic mass when the elements are arranged in a triad the atomic mass of the middle element was found are roughly equal to the average of the first and third element so if you see the example here we can easily understand what the voronoi's law states so these are the three de voronoi's triad so this is first triad this is second triad and this is third so this is second this is third and this is first triad so here the first triad lithium sodium and potassium so in the uh, first triad as we see first atomic mass here the atomic weight is written same thing so atomic mass of lithium is 7 and atomic mass of sodium uh, sodium is 23 and atomic mass of potassium is 39 so what the law states that the uh, the atomic mass of the, this middle element is roughly equal, roughly equal to the average of the first and third element so the second element the middle element is 23 and it is the average of first and third roughly equal so 7 plus 39 that is by 2 the average we have to calculate so the average is 39 plus 46 by 2 that is 23 so it is the atomic mass of sodium in the second triad similarly it will be uh, the second the middle uh, atomic mass of this middle element is 88 so the first element is 40 plus the third atomic mass of third element is 137 so it will be by 2 so if we have see here it is uh, 177 by 2 so it will the answer will be 88.5 so it is the atomic mass of this middle element as the uh, here it is said roughly equal so it may not be exactly 88 it may be around 88.5 or 89 so it is a roughly equal to the atomic mass of this middle element the atomic uh, mass of this first element and third element the average of this first and third will be the equal or to roughly equal to this middle element similarly if we see here it will be uh, it will also come same So this is the uh, classification of the Voronoi. So the Voronoi classified these ele uh, elements like this. So this he classif uh, classified only one, two, and three triads, not more than that. So his classification was uh, limited. So there are some limitations of his classification. So let's see what are the limitations. So in the limitations, 
uh, first delimitation is during the time of the Wiener, there were around 33 elements discovered so during his time there were around 33 elements discovered but his classification was applicable for only three tires that is for nine elements only so as you see here one two three four five six seven eight nine so only nine elements his classification was applicable for only nine elements he could um, classify the elements into three tires and another classification uh, sorry limitation was thus uh, the could not classify most of the elements known at that time so um, this limitation says there are 33 elements so out of this 33 only he could classify only nine elements rest of the uh, 24 elements he could not classify so his limit his classification was very limited so up to this much is very important this uh, classification limitation and the classification so in exam some questions may be asked if they give uh, this uh, atomic mass we have to calculate the average uh, mass or some questions may be asked like uh, which one of the following is not Doverinus tired or which one of the following is Doverinus tired so it is very important to learn these three so here we have only three uh, Li, Na, K and another one is K, C, A, S, R and V, A and another one is C, L, V, R and I so only these three that is uh, lithium, sodium, potassium calcium, strontium, barium, and chlorine, bromine, and iodine. Only these three, only sorry, and these three triads are um, applica applied in the Dobrynas classification. The rest of the 24 elements were not um, applicable for this classification. Only this classification was applicable for only these nine elements. So this was the classification of Dobrynas. So later, so um, different scientists um, classified the elements in different way. So up to this much we have learned. So I hope uh, clear. So if you have any doubt, you can ask me.